In Jesus' name we pray. King of glory, we thank you for another blessed day. We thank you for today being the last day. You have been with us. Continue with us. Even after the conference, continue with us. As we are going to our states, continue with us. As far as we remain alive, continue with us. And when we die, receive us in glory. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated. This morning we are considering a topic, commitment to true Christianity, to rapture or death. We all know our race is a race nobody knows his or her end. Either as we're expecting the rapture or there could be sudden death. John chapter 4. I'm reading 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. I'm talking about truth, worshiping in truth. In this commitment, you must know the truth to worship him in truth. You must remain in the truth. You must not stumble on the truth. Stand on the truth. Luke 1, 74, 75. Luke 1, 74, 75. That he will grant unto us that we, that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, my serving with our fear in holiness and righteousness before him. These are the three tracks of Christian race. Truth, holiness, righteousness. In our race to heaven, truth, righteousness, and holiness. That's the three Christian tracks. And here in your race, if you are any, out of any of these three tracks, that means you are not running according to the pattern of the race. See that your race must accord to this pattern. You will not run it anyhow. You will not do it anyway, but follow truth, righteousness, and holiness. And when you do that, continue running. If trumpets sound, you have no problem. If death comes anyway, anyhow, you have no problem. But running it without it, there could be danger in one's life. Praise the Lord. And as we are running in these three tracks of Christianity, there is the battles we must use in this track that is the fruit of the Spirit. The battles are nine. And the battings are Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such, there is no law. If you are running in this race with these nine battings, brethren, you will never stumble. You remain committed until the end. If there comes no matter how we come, suddenly sleep, you don't wake up or whatever, you are happy going home. So brethren, be very careful to see that you maintain your track and you maintain the button you are running with. Don't run anyhow. Don't run zigzag. Don't run because people are running. Look well. In Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. I'm reading 26, 27. I read. I therefore run. I therefore so run. Not as uncertainty. So fight I. Not as one that beat the air. If you maintain your track, that's how your race ought to be. 27. But I keep my, I keep under my body. And bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. To be a castaway is very easy. If you miss your track, you are becoming a castaway. If you are not running with the button, you lost the button in your Christian life. Maybe love is no longer there between you and the brethren. There is no more peace, no long suffering, no joy. You are becoming a castaway. 
Paul brought his body under. What is bringing your body under? That means every runner in this race, every committed Christian in this race must run as a servant and not as a lord. Running as a servant will keep you in check on the race. Running as a servant will make you always be cautious of your step, be cautious of your speech, be cautious of your actions. Paul brought himself under, not up, under. And we ought to do the same in this race. Bring yourself under, my brethren. Remain committed. We're expecting Jesus in rapture. We don't know the day. Death can come now. We don't know the time, the second minute, and the hour. If so be, that means we need to be very careful. We need to be more careful. We need to continue until the day only him knows the end. We want to, let us be wiser than the tortoise. The tortoise is the animal that lives all days in the animal kingdom. Tortoise live up to 200 years. Why? Because tortoise is very careful. A tortoise is walking. When he hears noise, he puts his head in his shelf and waits where the noise is coming from. He, when he discovers there is no more noise, he brings his head out. And that takes tortoise for a journey of 200 years. But look at the lion. He's always angry. Always quarreling. No lion live beyond later 16 years. So, as Tortoise brought himself under his shelf, we need to bring ourselves under. Under who? Under Jesus Christ. Under instructions. Follow him. Don't at any point show you have known anything. We have known nothing. God is honoring God. Bring yourself under. Run! But be under as you are running. Don't miss your track. Don't lose your bathing in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't miss your track. Don't lose your bathing. Because, you know, in track and field, if your bathing fell, you have to go and pick it. And at that point, others will overtake you. And it might become, a, it might become very dangerous for you. So don't lose your track. Don't miss your track. Don't lose your bathing. Titus chapter 1. I'm reading verse 3. But had in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Each and every word like that was explaining yesterday, something had been committed into us as, as ushers, as choirs, leaders, unit leaders, chapter leaders, sweepers, doing many things that have been committed unto us. Remain committed. Never you allow anything to take this commitment away. We have seen men that were committed to this cause and how they ended. As, Revelation, as Hebrew 11 talked about them, they were all committed unto death. In their commitment, they never leave the sea. They never see this world as anything. In their commitment, those who are even rich like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and others never see their world as anything. But we were looking for a city whose build and maker is who? God. And God did not deny them. Remain committed. Please, don't be carried away because you're a state coordinator, wife of a coordinator, chapter unity, regional coordinator. No! It's not so. You are called to serve. You are not called to lead. You are not called to rule. This work how will it be that the work is committed in your hand and halfway you drop it? Halfway the work was removed from your hand and give to another. How will you feel? You might not be happy. And then careful, it's not, if you are not careful with your hand, the devil will finish you. We have seen that. Many that were not careful and work was removed from their hand. We have seen their state today. Brethren, remain committed. The grace is there for I and you to remain committed unto death or the rapture. If you lose it out, God's hand is not involved. Don't blame anybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Luke 1, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Luke 4, 18. I'll read 18 and um, Luke 4, 18. I read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me 
because he has anointed me to preach the gospel of the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the, to the blind and set at liberty them that are bruised. That's what you do. This is Jesus. He was so committed to the assignment the Father gave him. Very committed. The poor, the bruised, the brokenhearted. And in our states, in our nations, units and chapters and regions, we have this class of people. How do you handle them? If you are fully committed, how do you handle these people that are broken hearted? How do you handle the oppressed, the fatherless, the widow? How do you handle them? You must be committed as the Lord was committed and deliver this also. See that none will blame you. You don't cause pain in their heart. Amen. Please, let's see that we keep that going in Jesus' name. First Kings chapter 3. Let's go to First Kings 12, 7 first. First Kings 12, 7. First Kings 12, 7. First Kings 12, 7, I read. And they spake unto him, saying, If thou will be a servant unto these people this day, this day, I will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servant forever. Leaders, members, believers, be a servant. If you are not a servant, you are not committed. In this commitment, servanthood is required. We sing a song, pass me not a gentle savior. If he's a gentle savior, and we say he should not pass us by, and you are following him, and you are not a gentle servant, can people follow you? Hello? Can people be obedient to you? They will not because you're not a gentle servant. It is those that became gentle servants as our Lord is a gentle savior. There are people who follow. Serve the people. Be committed. Don't at any time cause the people to become angry or bitter in their heart. No matter the good, the bad, the ugly. Daddy always tells us to see that even the left hand side of love we are not accused of riot. Be committed to this cause. And the God of peace will do great things in our lives in Jesus' name. Be fully committed. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. I'm reading verse 1 and 11. See that you remain committed. We don't know the day we came into this world. And the day we leave, nobody know. The day of the rapture, nobody know. The day of one dead, nobody know. All is in the hand of the Lord. First Corinthians 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Paul was speaking. Not only that Riga received this ministry. Yes, God chose him for the end, as the end time revival list. And we have become part of the end time revival. And we must follow the pattern which he's given to us. The rules, the policies. Do like this, do like that. We must not add to our policy. We must stand by the scripture and the instruction coming from the international director. There are no international directors in Horo more but one. And that's Pastor Paul Rica. Verse 11. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, so we believe. We believe in this cause. Do you believe in what that Rica is doing in Horo more? Do you believe? Can I see your hand up? If you believe, can I see your hand up? Can you stand up and thank Jesus for raising him up? Because without him, no, one, we wouldn't have gathered here. If you believe in that cause, say, Lord, I believe to this cause, which you handed over to your servant, Pastor Paul Rica. Oh, Lord, help me to be committed fully, spirit, soul, body, to this cause in Jesus name be seated be seated we must be committed to this cause nothing will stop us 
In the name of Jesus. Second Timothy. Second Timothy 2. 4 and 5. I read. 2, 4. No man that worried entangled himself with the fears of this life. That he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. Remember, once a soldier, always a soldier. Once committed, remain committed. Once a soldier, always a soldier. A soldier ceases to be a soldier in death. And in this cause, we are committed, this cause of Christ, this heavenly race in our commitment, we must remain soldiers and committed until we leave this earth in Jesus' name. Verse 5. And if a man also strive for masteries. Yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Run lawfully, like I talk about the three tracks of our race. Truth, holiness, and righteousness. And the bad thing, run! Not anyhow. So that at the end, you will rejoice that you have run a good race. You will know that I have done something good. You will not be regretting. How will it be after this running? You say you are committed and when death comes, you hear, depart from me, ye that walk in equity. Or the trumpet sound, people with you are left and you are behind. What will you tell yourself? Be careful. Remain committed. Especially with our tongue. Many are careful, but their tongue is careless. And with that careless tongue, you will run in vain. But that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Never that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Second Timothy again. Let me go for seven. Consider Second Timothy four now seven rather. Second Timothy four seven. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Paul is saying the level of his commitment in the race. The level of his commitment for the good fight, not a bad. If there is, if Paul fight a good fight, that means some might be fighting a bad fight. Check your fight, check your <laughs> your behavior, your conversation. If your own is a bad fight, amen. I have finished my course. Many does not finish their course in school. Check if your course is being finished or you're not finishing the course. Amen? I have kept the faith. Check if you're still working in faith, living in faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not me only, but unto all them also the love is appearing. Either in rapture or in death. If you fight well, finish your course, keep the faith, the same thing is awaiting you. It does not matter. The same thing is what? I will tell you. Praise the Lord. We are going to look at people should know. This is a subtopic now. People should know that they are to remain committed to the rapture or death. People should know. First Kings 19. First Kings 19. People should know that to remain committed to this course of running. Verse 19, I'm reading from verse 4 to 8. But he himself went a day journey into the wilderness and sat in and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die. You will never die until you complete your assignment. That's the commitment in the name of Jesus. That he might die. And said, He said, No, now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Five. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coal and a cruise of water and he, and his, on his head. And he did eat and drink and lay down again. And the angel 
of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. Forty days spiritual food. As we have been eating it since on Tuesday. As we have been eating it since 29, where the more started. Eating this spiritual food. Know that the food you are eating is to carry you along. Maybe some of us might still have 40 days journey. Some might have 40 years journey in commitment. Some might have 10 years, 5 years, 20 years. We don't know. Only God knows it. So as we are eating, eat well. Drink well, enough water. No, no physical water. Because the word is the water you are drinking. That will keep you. So that when you get to a place, you'll be alone. Nobody, no brother, no sister. The water will keep you. The food will keep you. Eat enough. I'm sure not only when we come, we write note, and not only when there is divine assignment, we listen to message, we pray or whatever. No! Continue eating for the journey is too great for us. Amen? The journey is what? Too great. Some here, if Christ tarries, their journey might still be up to 60 years ahead of them. Is it 60 days? Elijah was 40 days. Some their journey might still be 80. When I look, when daddy is talking his journey so far, where he has journeyed it today in Christianity, even one of the coordinators is terrible. I know I have not even started the journey because I'm not up to 20 years. So eat and be prepared for the journey. For God will not cut it short until you finish the journey. Amen. So have that at the back of your mind that there is much in this commitment. Oh, not that, oh, thank God, in the next six months, I'll be a free person. Uh-uh. In the next three years, uh-uh. he that put his hand in the plow and looked back is what? No worthy of the kingdom. You have decided to follow Jesus. There is no more doing what? Turning back. If you turn back, you are not worthy of the kingdom at all. Even the little commitment you have, maybe it's not from the law. You know where you get that commitment. Galatia. Galatia 2.20 I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ lived in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Have you allowed Jesus' surgical blade to pass through your heart? Are you still living? Are you struggling for position? Are you contending with people? Is there anger? If these things are there, the surgical blade of the Lord has not passed through your heart. And you are the one living and not Jesus. You might speak with your man that Jesus is living, but the Lord knows he's not living. He knows that you are the one living because you have refused him to use his surgical blade on you. And I pray that each and every one of us in Goremo coming 2024 will allow the Lord to use his surgical blade in our hearts. That we will become better Christians. This question of living holy, living righteous, doing this and that will no longer be a question again. But when we gather, saints are gathered. And by then, the enemies of the gospel will come into our midst and find that here is not, they are not welcome here. I'm talking of uh, the children of that kingdom. Allow his surgical blade. Paul has allowed it. And when Paul discovered that this, what this blade has done in me, I'm no longer the man. It's no longer Paul. That man that carried out the oppression on me, he's the one living in me. Let Jesus live in you in this commitment. Stop struggling with him. Allow him to be. He's the one that went to the cross. You did not go to the cross. It is him. So stop struggling with the Lord. Allow him to be. We sing a song. Say, let the Lord have his way. Are you allowing him to have his way in your marriage, in your ministry, the state you are coordinating, in your chapter? You need? Are you allowing Jesus to have his way? Or you are struggling with him. When, he want, when a situation comes, you say, no, Lord, I want them to know that I'm educated. I want them to know that I'm rich. I want them to know that I'm this and that. Ah, why? 
He never contended with his father. He came to fulfill the will of the father. Can't you fulfill the will of Jesus Christ in your life? A state of function or unit or whatever. May the Lord have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Please know this. Allah is displayed. If you are, watch our father in the Lord. He's ever peaceful. With this large ministry, you will never see daddy in the day, in the night, on phone, on the internet, and see daddy, a man that is weary or uh, someone that is stressed. He's always himself. Because he is not the man. He has allowed the man that carried out the surgical operation, Jesus, to live his life for him. Don't you see how fresh daddy looks? At times I wonder. He can cancel from 8, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., to even 12 midnight. Yet he's looking fresh. And we that are walking under him are looking so tired and stressed. What are we doing? Less. But look at him. Many, look at the story of the children of darkness on the internet. Many of us, that will even make us to stumble. But look at him. Very peaceful. Very peaceful. Nothing troubles him. And <laughs> you are troubled. May the Lord help us to be like our spiritual father in Jesus' name. <laughs> May the Lord put upon us what he has put upon him. All. <laughs> As he took from Moses on the 70 elders. May the Lord do the same for us in Jesus' name. He's a serious thing. Anytime I look at that, he's so serious. Philippians 2. <laughs> Philippians 2. I'm reading verse 14. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. 15, I continue. That ye may be blameless, harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of of the crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as light in the world. 16. Holding for the world of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. It could be the day of rapture or the day of my death, that I will rejoice that I'm going home to see my king. Remove murmuring. Don't murmur. Don't dispute. Allow him to, to be. And when death comes, anyhow it comes, no problem. When mommy was testifying last night about Sister Zunum, was it not a joyful thing? She saw she's becoming true. She's getting worried. And suddenly a voice came, not a voice from earth, but a voice from heaven, and said, Zenum, I'm an angel. I'm sent to come and take you home. How joyful will you be at that day? That you are shot, accident happened, suddenly dead came. You became worried, and an angel came and said, Brother, I was sent to take you home. Ah, Father, help us in Jesus' name. Yeah. <laughs> May we end well in the name of Jesus. Yeah. May we not end halfway in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. As 9.16. Nine sixteen. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So, in this commitment, suffering is involved. It's not a commitment of bread and butter. It's not a commitment of pleasure, but suffering is involved. But as you depend on him, he will take you through the sufferings of this commitment. Suffering from the hand of your fellow man. Suffering from the hand of the enemy. Anything suffering is involved in the commitment. But in all, you must remain committed. In the name of Jesus, remain committed. Don't look back. Don't turn back. Whatever comes, he's aware of it. He will make a way for you, a way of escape for you in Jesus' name. We're going to another subtopic. Persevere to avoid all contamination of this present life. Persevere. Persevere to avoid all contamination because there are many particles of contamination 
determination in the world. Many. We have seen how little things has destroyed great ministers. They, be, they became stained. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse number 10. Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that ye might be able to stand against the wise of the devil because of contamination. Put on the whole armor of God. It comes from Satan and man. Contamination comes from Satan and who? Man. 11. 12 rather. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Are you seeing it? things that are there to, call, to stay, bring stain to you? And human beings are their source of material to bring this to come upon you. Very many. Verse 13. Wherefore, because of this, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God in this commitment. I said, if you lose your track, you are in trouble. If you miss the battle, you are in trouble. Take the whole armor of God. That he may be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand. Contaminate it's much. We have seen people money removed from Christ. We have seen people lost. We have seen anger. Even that one, I don't know. That was the greatest. Today, anger is it's like human being can no longer have control over anger. You even watch a little child. That's how either the mother or another or the sibling might tell that child. You see a child react in anger. I wonder how could a child have anger? Amen. Stand there for having your lungs. Get about with truth. Remember, the first track was what? Truth. Amen. And having on the bread place of what? Righteousness. The second track. Watch it. Don't miss your track. If you miss your track, you have missed the race. These three, truth, holiness, righteousness. If you miss it, you have missed the race. And on your feet, shoot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. The shield of faith. One of the buttons. Where we you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts. Of the wicked. When these things come, you see, as our daddy, go and tell daddy now. <laughs> hey, there is bomb all over the campground. Daddy, we're in trouble. The next thing you hear from me is be peaceful. <laughs> and as he tell you, be peaceful. You watch the man that say be peaceful. The peace is involving is even more than the word he tell you. So, my brethren, in this race, as you are running, commit a be what? Peaceful. Let the peace of God be there. 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Take it. The whole armor. You will not be, you will not be contaminated. Whether in the day, in the night, no matter where you find yourself, you will never be contaminated. And in verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all sins. Praying always, not one hour, 30 minutes per day. Praying always, not two hours per day. Praying always, not when I'm traveling. Praying always, always. When you are not praying, speaking out. You are praying in the spirit. When you are traveling, you are praying in the spirit. When you are walking, you are praying in the spirit. When you are cooking, you are praying in the spirit. When you are sleeping, the spirit is praying. Whatever you are doing, prayer is going on. And as you are doing that, 
you're occupying your space. Enemy will not come. But many of us will be traveling for four hours. WhatsApp for four hours. No prayer. And then certain things happen. Jesus. But you did not remember him. You are WhatsApping for four hours. But you are asked to pray always with all prayer. Because the moment you keep praying, you are a righteous man. You are watching every time. You are alive. You know your environment. You monitor your movements in your environment. Every time. Watching with perseverance. Nobody will cross. Make sure we leave this from 2024. Praying always with all manner of prayer. If the enemy is planning, why was he exposing the secrets of the enemy to his prophets? Because they lived out the life of prayer. And then the enemy became worried. What is it that anything I plan, these people know? Because there is a man of prayer in that nation, praying all ways. With all manner of prayer. Yeah, it would be hard for you to stumble. If you are praying all ways, and you are stumbling. Definitely there is something wrong. And you need help. You seek, you seek, for, you seek, seek leadership. The way I pray and the way I see myself, I behave. I am not happy with it. I pray well, I see have anger. I pray well, I see have bitterness. Meet leadership for advice. Oh, manner of prayer. In Jesus' name. If you go to Luke 18, 1, Jesus said, men always ought to what? Pray. See that you persevere in prayer. And not lazy now. Amen. Philippians 1, 4. Always in every prayer of mine, for you, making requests with joy. Prayer! That's the only weapon we can have to persevere in this present world is by prayer. We sing a song. Jesus started with prayer. Jesus ended with prayer. Is it not so? He started with prayer. He ended with prayer. So as a Christian, you will continue praying. You will start to pray. You will end in prayer. Watch since we have been here on Tuesday. Since Saturday, let me say, or Friday because of the fasting, it has been what? Is it not prayer, prayer? It has been prayer. Don't you see the atmosphere, the peace in the atmosphere of this conference? Because prayer is going on and prayer will continue to go on. Don't lazy out in prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. If you look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, say pray without season. That means prayer is supposed not to stop because of where the world will find ourselves, because of the dangers involved, because of the crisis from man and Satan. Keep praying. I am telling you, you occupy your space. When the Lord says occupy till I come, prayer will help you to occupy your space. And when you occupy your space, it's like nobody, any, anybody, anybody encroaching, you will discover the person. But when I see some brethren, we say, ah, this night, the attack I receive. If you're a Christian of prayer, how can you receive attack? I used to ask myself, oh, that, okay, I want to sleep. I want to sleep. And a witch will cause me not to sleep. I wake up that witch and say, wait, when I wake up, I want to do you. I'm telling you. Or I want to travel. The fear of traveling, a witch make me not to travel. Not in this life. When I know that greater is he that dwells in me than the devil that is in the world. Nothing. Nothing. People close to me know. 
complain of witchcraft. Who is, what is a witchcraft? If witchcraft is real, why is he only walking in the night? Why is he only in the night if they fly? My own, I pray in the day and I pray in the night. So I'm stronger than him. Let's watch it out. Although grace varies in Jesus' name. <laughs> grace varies. Then walk in wisdom. Another subtopic. Walk in wisdom. Keep yourself righteous. We have read Luke 1, 74, 75. Colossians 3. Walk in wisdom. Colossians 3, I'm reading from verse number 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgive you, so also do ye. See that you don't have quarrel with any. Forgive. So their commitment will not be corrupted. So that your race will not be in question. Forgive one another. 14. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. The agreement of perfection is what? Charity. Love is the agreement of perfection. See that you have love within yourself, between you and your wife and children, between you and your brethren. Let it not be love of mouth. Let the people you are showing this love you are living with know that from your heart, from my coordinator's heart, his wife's heart, my chapter in the original coordinator's heart, this love is coming out. And they'll be happy to have you as a leader. And you'll be happy to have them as members. Because once they see that from your heart, this love is flowing, from their heart, the love will flow to you also. It's a two-way thing. Love is the agreement of perfection. No wonder you say the first and second commandment is love. It's the agreement of perfection. Verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the peace of God, like I talk about the, the peaceful life of our Father in the Lord, let it rule you. Be peaceful. Stop reacting. As a serpent, which is Satan. Be peaceful. Let the peace of God. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. He is the peace of God. Let Jesus rule your heart. But if he's not ruling your heart, this quarrel will be there always. The anger will be there always. The bitterness, the complaint. Fault finding will be there because neither you nor those you are leading has the peace of Christ, God, which is Jesus Christ. None have the peace. Even, the, even if you're alone, that person calls you. you you're alone, oh, he's not there, oh, you're ang answering angrily. <laughs> you're answering angrily. Yes, hey, Father, have mercy on man in Jesus' name. <laughs> you're answering angrily, and you're alone. Maybe the devil, <laughs> you see both of you, will make him know the tune of your answer. And there he'll be talking to you angrily. <laughs> the fire will catch you. Amen. Please. 16 last. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admon admonishing one another in psalms and in hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. That's all. Be blameless. Be harmless. You finish this race well. Remain committed. Ask the Lord to allow the peace to rule your heart. That's, the, that's what you need. And when that peace comes, you will know. People around you will know. Your behavior will change. Your character will change towards them. Let it rule your heart. And stop ruling your heart yourself. But let the peace of God rule your heart in Jesus' name. First Kings 3 12. As God gave wings, Sol Solomon asks for wisdom. Asks for wisdom. You know, I always tell people around me, 
I discovered a scripture as a key to Christian rest. That is Matthew 7, 7. It says, ask, seek, and find. Like that, they have been teaching us on wisdom. Ask God to give you the grace to be wise. Seek God to give you the grace to be wise. Knock on his door. Continue knocking until the door of grace of wisdom is open unto you. And then you'll be a wonderful Christian. I'm telling you. Knock! Because in Psalm 834, those who wait at his gate, who are at his doorpost, remain there until the door of wisdom is open and you will receive the wisdom of God. And the struggling of the race will end. Because at that point, he's the one that will do the direction. He did it to Solomon. When Solomon asked this, he gave Solomon more than what he asks. Not that you elect, made a coordinator. Our oh, father, I'm asking for the power that they will know that I'm, I'm this, I'm that. So now asking for wisdom to lead his children. Asking for wisdom to be, to be a servant. Asking for wisdom to, to, for them to be more than you. To see them better than you are. You're asking for wisdom. Let them know that I can pray. We know you can pray. Prayer without wisdom will end you in hell. Don't you know? Seek wisdom. Wisdom is a principal thing. Get it, get understanding. Knowledge will come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're jumping. If you even there, because of which you look at James 3, 17 to 19, it will, you see it there. And then Philippians 2. Philippians. Let's go to Philippians 2. I'm talking of wisdom. Philippians 2, 19 to 21. I read. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. 20. For I have no man like minded who will naturally care for your state. Let it not be coordinators, that international director, over 70 or there about coordinators in the world, he has no man like minded as him. Please, my fellow coordinators, may God help us. May God help us. May God help our wives. May God help the chapter unit leader and regional coordinators. That the international leader can turn back and see some who are like-minded like him. Verse 21. For all seek their own and not the things which are Jesus Christ. Coordinators say that what you are seeking is not your own. When you are given instruction, obey. When policy come out, handle. So that when this man turn back, he can see those that are him. He minds the things of Christ. Nobody can dispute that again. That he will see us also as minding the things that are Jesus Christ. And members, do the same to your coordinators. The coordinators will turn back and see you and, and see people who, who they can trust, who mind the things of Christ, not the gain they want, not when the matter comes. You are speaking eruditely, but you are speaking because they will give you down because you are expecting something for yourself and not the things that are of Christ. See that you don't do that. In Jesus' name. We have two more to go, but we can't finish it. Walk on your flesh. Another subtopic. Walk on your flesh. Briefly, let me go to Galatians 5. Walk on your flesh. Galatians 5. I'm reading from verse I think it's 19. Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, simulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and as such, and as such like of the which I tell you before, as I also tell you in time past, 
that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Although they run the race, they will not inherit heaven. At any point, death come. They are lost forever. At any point, the trumpet of the rapture sound. They are lost forever. Handle your flesh. Don't give place to your flesh. Again, Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the desires, the lust of the flesh. See that you are living and walking in the spirit, you will never fulfill the desires of the flesh at all, my brother. And then Galatians 5, 25. If you walk in the spirit, also live in the spirit. And lastly is, because of the urgency of the rapture, the happenings around our world has confirmed it. If you go to Romans 1, you read about how men have become where they are. You go to 2 Timothy 3 or there about, you see that in the last days, perilous times shall come. We are in the third end of perilous times. For men have become lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. The church have become lovers of themselves more than lovers of Jesus. Nations have become lovers of themselves more than lovers of Jesus. We are towards the end of the perilous time. The rapture is the next to happen. We are at the end of it. For today in Africa, Mauritania, and South Africa has been deceived on same-sex marriage. Germany has removed incest. Marry whatever you like. All over the world. It's at this point Sodom got to. And the land of Sodom cry against Sodom. And I know the earth is crying against this generation. And God will hear it. And God will come and see if all flesh has corrupted themselves and God will judge this earth, shall we be on our feet? Quick, let's be on our feet. Until I reach my home, until I reach my home, until I reach my home. I will never, never stop my journey halfway. Hallelujah. Until I see Jesus. Until I see Jesus. Until I see my Lord. I will never, never stop my journey halfway. Hallelujah. Until I see Jesus. Take it to God in prayer. Promise God you remain committed until you meet him. Promise him you remain committed until you see him. Promise you remain committed until you, you enter heaven. Promise him to remain committed. To remain committed in this life, in this race. To remain a committed Christian. No matter what you see, promise the Lord to remain committed. Open your mouth and promise him that you remain committed. Ask for the grace to remain committed. Seek for the grace to remain committed. Knock that the door to remain committed be open unto you. Seek it. In Jesus' name we pray. Eternal reality. As we are waiting for your appearance in rapture. And as we don't know the day of our death, give us the grace to continue. May we not stumble. Help our infirmities. Help our unbelief. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.